My name is Yedidia. I work at Wix. I'm on the mobile team. Um, I used to be a native Android developer, and about nearly two years ago, I moved to Wix. And since then, I've been working on the Wix mobile team. Um, moved from Android to React Native, so I've been working in React and JavaScript and fun things like that. Um, and today, I'm going to be talking about Remix. And a few people have already asked me, what is Remix? So Remix is yet another state management library for React. And I'm sure everyone's sort of wondering the obvious question, why? There's already Redux, there's already Mobix, so why do we make another one? So to get to that, I'm going to give you some background about what I do. Um, I work on the Wix One app. That's its logo. Um, you can find it in Google Play, iTunes. Um, it allows Wix users to manage their website. So if you have... Um, like this guy has a blog, he can manage his blog and post using our Wix app. Um, you can do other things, download it, find out, see what happens. What interests people is technical stuff. So shouldn't React Native. Um, if people don't know what React Native is, it's like React, it's made by Facebook. It works on the same um, functions as React. Um, and it allows you to write native mobile apps on Android and iOS using JavaScript. So all your logic and all your UI can be written in JavaScript using JSX, just like React. Um, our app is made of lots of different modules. Every team in Wix, or a lot of the teams in Wix, and some others have a part of the app. And each module is self-contained. And what's relevant for us, self-contained means it controls its own state. And every module is free to choose their own architecture. That means if if someone wants to use Redux, they can. If someone wants to use Mobix, they can. However, they decide that team wants to write their app, they can do that. And altogether, there's, a, I think, over 40 now developers working on this app, which means that we got to some point where scale was really important. So how did people decide to manage their state? So some people used global scope variables, which makes me sad. but. There are some valid reasons for doing that occasionally. Um, a few use local component state. React gives you a perfectly good state management system built into every component. Why not use that? Um, some use a lot. Probably the majority use Redux. That's the popular one. And there are a few that use Mobix. So it sounds like everything's great. Everyone can manage their own state however they want. Plenty of good solutions. Well, sort of. So, first of all, Redux and Mobix are great. You've seen talks about both of them. They both work. You can use both of them however you want. They're really they're good. But each one has its own strengths and their own weaknesses. Like There are some good things, and um, Leo spoke about at the beginning some downsides of Redux and why you might not want to use it for every situation. They are the same for Mobix. So we thought these are the... Um, pluses and minuses of both of them that, as we felt them. First of all, the advantage of Redux is that it gives you a very, very clear structure. Anyone who is familiar with Redux can look at a Redux app and understand how it works. <coughs> you have your actions, you have your reducers, you know exactly how the state flows and how the actions flow from one to the other. It gives you structure. It's also enforcement. It's a flux architecture, which means you have all the advantages of flux, which for people who know that, it's important. It was important to us to keep that. It also gives you a very clear component hierarchy. You have components which are connected to your state, and you have components which aren't. And um, Ryan said that that went too far with them, but we found that it was important to understand like, what components you can use in different places and what you couldn't. Also, Redux has a huge community. It's like, one of the biggest open sources for JavaScript, and that was nice. Disadvantages of Redux, like Leo said, is boilerplate. You have to start, uh, like you showed, with a counter, you need to write three files. You need to write a lot of code. And there's just a lot of extra code. S starting up a new project is complicated. <coughs> and that was a disadvantage that everyone felt. Also, the single store. You can have a single state of truth, but it doesn't need to be the single state for the entire application. So what people end up doing is using um, what Redux gives you, combined reducers, and you sort of 
pretend that you have multiple stores, but in reality you only have one. Um, sometimes you want to split up your state into different pieces. Not all your state has to be connected to everything else. It also has a very steep learning curve. It can be simple, but there's a lot of different things. And as soon as you get below the surface of Redux, there's a lot of different um, architectures that you need to learn. And uh, people found it more complicated to start up with. And the biggest one for us was testing. So some more about testing. It is possible to write unit tests for Redux. Um, when I'm talking about unit tests, I find a lot of people um, think about component testing, especially in the front end, in the web world, people think about component tests. Coming from a Android and from a native development background, when we think about unit tests, we're thinking about the logic, specifically testing your logic. The UI interests me a bit less. Um, in React Native specifically, when you're, if you run component tests in JavaScript, then you're only really testing half of the render because half of it's happening on the native side. So we're interested in testing unit tests for your logic. So it, it is possible. And there's a library here that I help write, which helps you really uh, write unit tests for all your different bits of your Redux code. But you can't TDD Redux. TDD is test-driven development. It means you write the test first, and you don't design your code. You let the test design it for you. And the idea is that you end up with very easily testable code. You end up with very disconnected, very, or not disconnected, but you end up with very small units. Each bit, each function does exactly what it's meant to do and nothing else. And that's impossible to do with Redux for the simple reason that Redux has written your structure for you. You know how your code looks. You have an action and you have a reducers and you know exactly what it's going to do. So you can't let the code grow organically from tests. So that's Redux. Mobix, we found it's very, very simple. Like you saw with uh, Ryan's talk, it's simple to start. It's very flexible. It doesn't tell you how to do anything. You can do anything you want. And it's got really good performance. And multiple stores. It doesn't really tell you. You don't really have a store. You have lots of different things. Anything observable is its own store. It's great. <laughs> um, Thanks. But we found disadvantages to Mobix as well. It's too much freedom. When you have an app which has new developers coming all the time, you can't look at a Mobix app and understand how it's structured because there is no structure. Mobix, this is from the documentation of Mobix, where they say it's not a framework. It doesn't tell you how to structure your code. But sometimes you want someone to tell you how to structure your code, especially if you're going to have to look at any one of these 26 modules that we have and find out and straight away, you want to be able to know, more or less, where to look when things go wrong. And it's got a little bit too much magic. Um, the rendering, the performance is great, but it all happens behind the scenes. Like, it's overly implicit. Like, for example, it's hard to know, if you look at a component, a React component, what is connected to your state and what isn't. For example, this is a Mobix component, which is observing something. But what is it observing? So in this example, it's very simple because there's only one prop that is used, so it's observing a to-do. Sorry. But there's nothing that's implicit. That's worked out at runtime, as opposed to the Redux example for the same thing, where you know exactly what you're observing because you have to write it over there. You have to use a function, uh, map state to props, which takes things from the state and puts it into your props. You have to explicitly say everything that you want your components to observe. So we found that was an advantage of Redux over Mobix. What about testing with Mobix? So you can TDD with Mobix because it's completely without structure. So you can write it however you want. Although that lack of structure can cause some issues with testing. For example, your tests generally, and if you look on the web how people test Mobix, generally the tests know that the <laughs> code is using Mobix. So again, you can't write your tests and then decide what to use because your tests are already checking that things are observable or things like that. Also, different best practices that different people come up with to enforce some structure on Mobix can limit the advantages that you get. For example, um, you, lots of people use a single store. To get around knowing what's observed, a lot of people use one single store and then you know that your store is observed. I think the premium team that runs from used that method. Uh, but of course, that limits you on multiple stores. 
Also, you can have, if you're separating all your code into different stores, you can put your actions inside the store. So you have an object for, say, person, and you have all the actions that deal with person inside the same class. What that means is, it, that's great, but what that means is that your tests have to know exactly how that person object is structured. So if you have a, an action, you want to test the result of that action, so you run it, and then you have to know exactly how that person is structured in order to read from it, because you can't mock it because it's all the same object that you're testing. So we thought, what if we could take the best of both and leave the rest behind? So that's what we came up with. Well, <coughs> so let's recap what the good bits are. So we want structure. We want it to be flux. We want clear component hierarchy. We want it to be as simple as possible, but as flexible as possible. We want it to keep the as high performance as possible and multiple stores. And very importantly for us was it to be TDDable. So we get to Remix. This is our attempt to answer all of this. So Remix is four functions. You have function state, getters, setters, and connect. That's the whole thing. What do they do? So if you look on, in um, documentation of Redux and you look in documentation of Mobix, so they both um, use a to-do app as their demonstration of how everything works. So if we're going to take the interesting parts of a to-do app, for Remix, this is what it would look like. So you have a state. The state function, you give it an object, and it makes it observable. Same way Mobix does, but I'll get to it later with a slight tweak. Um, you keep that to yourself, don't export it, and you use getters and setters to interact with it. What does that mean? So these are getters. Getters is a function that you give it a group of functions, and those are the things that talk to your state. So here, we've started off with loading and to-dos. So here, if you want to get information from your state, you export all these functions which can read it. This hides the structure of the state from anyone using it. And then you can export them, like exported them at the bottom, and anyone using the store just calls store is loading, and they know if the state loading is true or not. You can also, don't have to read directly from the state, you can do any logic you want. You can sort and filter and anything, any um, business logic that is involved in reading from the state you put here. Sort of like selectors in um, Redux or computed in Mobix. And anything possible is memoized. So it will only be run once until things change. Um, why I say anything where it's possible? Because the first two functions here will be memoized. The third won't because it gets a parameter. So there'll be infinite ways of calling this, so it's not memoized. So important to keep in mind, doesn't really matter too much in uh, most cases. Next function is setters. Any mutation that you do to your state, and someone asked, yeah, you, we have a mutable state. Um, any mutation goes through a setter. Exactly the same as getters, you wrap a bunch of functions. Each function changes something in the state however you want. It doesn't need to just change, well, like, like loading, it can push onto an array, it can reset something, anything, any change that happens to that original wrapped object. And the last function is connect, which works in the same way as Redux connect, but simpler. It takes one um, parameter, which is map state to props, and this gives us the what we had from Redux, which is declaring exactly what we want to observe. So here we can see we're observing to-dos and we're observing loading. And we get both of those in our props here, and we can have a clear connected component. And then we can in make a list, which is a dumb component in Redux terms, which isn't connected to any state. It just gets props. And as opposed to Redux, where you'd get the state as an implicit argument to your map state to props function, your state comes from just importing stores. So you can have as many stores as you want. You can import from as many as you want and just use their getters, which are exported, to read anything you want from them. And it'll automatically be memoized and connected to your state. So how does this actually work? So it uses Mobix. 
it uses MOBIC um, actions for setters and computed for getters. Um, it tweaks that slightly. Um, if you've used MOBIX, you probably know that to get anything useful out of anything that you've um, observed, you normally need to do, use the function 2JS at the end, which, because observing something in MOBIX puts a lot of extra stuff into that object, all the listeners, and there's all sorts of extra stuff. If you make a MOBIX observable and then print it out as a string, you get a lot of stuff that you didn't put in there yourself. Um, we use um, JS proxy, which is a um, ES6 um, thing whenever it's possible to uh, behind the scenes put the observables in recursively, you end up with the performance of Mobix, but a much cleaner API. So you don't need to put in 2JS, and you can just treat everything like it's what you put in because that's what you get out. Um, there's also a function merge. If you want to use some immutability, then you can use state merge. And the only debugging tool that you really need is to see whatever happened. Um, and it's got another function which will print out every time anything happens. And when you're in debug mode, you can see everything's memoized. It only calls the right things. It doesn't call anything except what you expect, hopefully. So what does the actual business logic look like for an app written with Remix? So back to our to-do app. So it was so short, so I decided to write it twice with promises and with async await. It's you want to load your to-dos, so you tell your store it's loading, you load them, however you do that, and then you put them in the store. Now, there's no mention of Remix here, and there's no mention of React here, because this is business logic. Why does it need to, be, why does it need to know that Remix exists? And back to testing. So what do tests look like? So if you're testing your state, so, uh, before, this is written using Jest. You can use any testing library you want. Just find Jest to be simplest. Um, you require your state at the beginning, and then you just test it. So you say, I want it to start off with an empty array. I put stuff in. I expect to get stuff out. I expect that any filter or sort works. I can sort things however I want, and then check. You're just putting stuff in, testing it exactly like you do a normal test. and it doesn't mention React and it doesn't mention Remix. As opposed to a Redux test for sure and a Mobix test probably, there's no reason that your store should really know anything else. It's completely TDDable. You can write the test and then at the end you write the code to make it green. And you can remove Remix and replace it with something else. It's just a plugin that's meant to connect your state to your UI. It sits in between them. There's no reason that your tests need to know that it exists at all. What about business logic tests? So it's the same. There's no mention of Remix. You just, at the beginning, you can mock your store. And you're using a mock store. You don't need to, because that's not what you're testing here. If you want to test your logic, the side effects are that the set functions were called. So you set it up. Um, every test is, a unit test is meant to have a setup and um, running the test and then checking what happened. So you set it up, you, do your, you run your unit, what you're testing, and then you expect the side effects to have been called. So I want it to have set it to be loading with true and then with false, and I want the set to do's to have been called with whatever I set it up with, and the same thing if it fails. So again, you can use the actual store or but mocked, which means you get exactly the same functions. If you're using Jest, then you'll only be able to use functions that actually exist. But you're not testing your store at the same time as your logic. And yeah, so in the end, we have the structure because everything is, you still have that store and you still have, you have to declare exactly what's changing your store and what's getting back. You still have that connection to your components. It still flux in the same way that Mobix is because every action um, re-renders the state. Um, you have a clear component hierarchy because you have that connect function that declares exactly what you want. And if you don't use the connect function, then you're definitely not a connected component. You're not getting anything from the store. It's four functions. It's pretty simple. It's flexible because you, you can have stores however you want. You can, like, that's a advice of how to use it, but you can spread <laughs> things out more. It's Mobix under the hood, it's as flexible as Mobix. 
Um, it's got the same performance as Mobix. And you have your multiple stores. And it's testable. So we got everything we wanted. Yeah. Um, you can find it here. You can give it a star, try it out, fix anything you find that doesn't work. Um, the first star it got before there was any anything but code there, any documentation was from Michel Westrait, who wrote Mobix. So I actually talked to him about it when he was in Tel Aviv. He seems to like it. Um, so yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Um, can, you, can you steal the completed value? Um, so anything that you get from a getter, yeah. The question was, can you use computed values? So if you write something in a getter and wrap it with a getter function, then it is computed. So everything in a getter is memoized automatically, if possible. Um, you can also, in your business logic, I didn't use it in the example, but you can use those getters and import stores from anywhere you want, anywhere in your code. Um, I took some um, projects and moved them from Redux to Remix, and that was a huge thing to find because suddenly I wasn't limited to working with inside the Redux space. I didn't need to be writing a thunk to have access to the state in the store. I could just import it and read it using a getter function. It means you can, you're can you far more flexible than Redux. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs>